Hello and welcome to Chill Play. I've got a funny one for you tonight. Not intentionally funny, but absolutely hilarious. We're going to be going through some of the Ambition series of Flash games. And Ambition uh, was basically a series of choose-your-own-adventure games done in Flash. Rest in peace, Flash. I, I guess last year, 2020... As if, you know, not enough stuff went wrong already. Uh, Adobe Flash reached what's called its end of life as software. <laughs> That's so melodramatic sounding. as the end of life of Flash. <laughs> so basically now if you want to play any Flash game or animation, you have to use something like an emulator like Flashpoint here. Anyhow, Ambition was a series of uh, choose-your-own-adventure Flash games uh, done by a company called Zap Dramatic. Headed up by a gentleman by the name of Michael Gibson. Oh, you absolute mad lad. And Michael Gibson also sold conflict resolution courses that he would sell to companies and uh, organizations and, and such. And the courses you actually had to pay money for. I just want you to keep that in mind. And these... Uh, choose your own adventure games here, Ambition, they kind of revolve around conflict resolution, so they were kind of serving as commercials for this negotiation uh, training, these negotiation training courses that Gibson would offer. So just something to keep in the back of your mind there as we play through these interestingly written and interestingly animated uh, kind of <clears throat> half animation, half games, mostly animation. So let's start with episode one, The Desperate Dad. An interactive mystery by Michael Gibson. This is the closest thing we'll get to a protagonist, is this guy here. This is Ted. Good morning, Clink International. I'm sorry, he's not in yet. Would you like his voicemail? Good morning, Clink International. Please hold. Good morning, Clink International. Please hold. Yes? May I help you? Oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's nobody home. She's trying to frame me, Bridget. You get that Bridget out here. I have a nut bar here at reception with a bomb around his waist. <laughs> you tell that Bridget to get out here now before I blow us all to hell. Sir, please have a seat over there and somebody will be right with you. She's trying to make me look bad. I want my kids back. Where is she? Sir, you can't. <laughs> Where is that crazy woman? Excuse me, couriers. Nobody's nobody freaking out home. by the suicide bomb. <laughs> You're still Bridget. taking phone calls? There's nobody home. You put that gun down or I blow us all to hell. I'm counting to three. One. Two. Alright, so we have to advise the cop on what to do or say to keep us all from getting blown up. And yes, I am breaking my usual policy of no talking over cutscenes because, I mean... It's a uh, choose-your-own-adventure flash game that's mm, more animation than gameplay, so I don't really care. And there's a hint button here. If you click that, it'll basically highlight the correct answer. So, let's advise the cop to talk. And what should the cop say? Hi, my name is Jim. Hi, my name is Jim. <clears throat> Listen to me, you moronic monkey. You drop that gun or so help me, I'll blow us all to hell. So, I mean, this is just me playing armchair negotiator, but I think the first thing I would do is ask Ted's name. And that way I could use it in conversation to humanize him and hopefully earn some of his trust. But hey, what am I saying? I haven't taken any of Michael Gibson's negotiator courses, so I'm the amateur here. So, school me, Gibson. All right. Uh, what should the cop do now? Drop the gun and act friendly. Okay, I put the gun down. Now, why don't you tell me what's going on? 
But there's nobody home. She's trying to free me, Bridget. I want my kids back. You tell that Bridget to get out here now before I blow us all to hell. <clears throat> it's one of many amusing things about the game here is how a lot of these characters are obviously all voiced by Gibson, but he'll do something like do a, a bargain bin Christian Bale impersonation when voicing Ted or lowering his voice uh, in post-production when he's voicing the cop, even though we can still tell it's still him. All right, so what should the cops say next? Uh, let's ask Ted, who is Bridget? Who's Bridget? She's my ex-wife, and she's trying to frame me. I didn't do it. You don't believe me. Nobody's going to believe me. Hmm. Okay, calm down. My name's Jim, and I'm going to help you sort this out. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Do you think I'm crazy? Yes. I mean, that's obviously not what you should say to him, but yes, I think you're a frickin' loon. I don't know if you're crazy or not, but the dynamite scares me. Are you scared? Are you scared of me? Yes, I'm afraid of getting blown up, aren't you? I don't care. If you knew what I've been through, you'd understand. So I'm going to go through and pick all the correct answers, but if there's an ans a wrong answer that results in a particularly funny outcome, then uh, I'll choose that one just to show you what happens. And of course, if you want to go and read all of these, I mean, if for some reason you're actively watching this, you know, feel free to just pause and read them. Tell me what you've been through. I put them to bed and read them a story. Then I, uh, you know, had a few drinks and... Uh... Passed out. As any but responsible no father would. Blood everywhere, and they were gone. That's horrible. No wonder you're so upset. I'd be upset too. Don't patronize me, you sanctimonious pig. You get that Bridget out here with my kids, or I'll blow us all to hell. Another thing we'll learn is that Gibson is a big fan of his pretentious adjectives. Especially the word sanctimonious. I think he uses it again. And calling someone a sanctimonious Sally. <laughs> or another favorite of mine is uh, he uses the insult pusillanimous cupcake. <laughs> All right, uh, this one. I don't know where Bridget and your kids are. Can you help me, please? She's crazy. She's got my kids. I don't know if it's her. I'm worried about being crazy there, Ted. Maybe we can get Bridget on the phone, but first you've got to put down that detonator. You call her right now. I'm not putting this down until I see them. Do you know how to get a hold of Bridget? She hasn't been in for three days, and there's no answer at her house. Liar! That's the truth! You know where she is. Help! <laughs> I mean, up until now, this has been the most composed secretary ever. Like, her job before this, she obviously must have been a Navy SEAL or something. All right, say, think about your kids. I mean, yeah, it's probably what I'd say in real life. Think about your kids. Yeah, where are my kids? I've got to find my kids. I'm not crazy. <laughs> and like any sane person... He just yeets himself out a window. Doesn't look all that good, does it? Lord, I I know I don't deserve it, but if you'd put a mattress truck beneath me, I'd... I'd wash your feet. I'd wash the feet of anybody you told me to, Lord. Is he crazy? Yes. Or is he the victim? No. <laughs> Actually, spoiler alert if you care about spoilers for this game. Uh, in this big, twisted, contrived, convoluted plot of oh, Deus Ex Mattress Truck, in, in the grand plot of things, yes, Ted is actually the victim here, and he's under the control of a brain-warping drug called Paxwick that <clears throat> he was drugged with and just made him lose his mind, go crazy. He woke up, and the combination of his kids being gone and this... Um, magical Captain America Winter Soldier super drug, you know, it just got to him and made him go nuts. <laughs>
All right, so that was episode one of Ambition, the Desperate Dad. Let's go to episode two, where we shall meet some new characters here. And uh, <laughs> practically every character in this series is just ends up being utterly unlikable. Ironically, actually, I think Ted ends up being the most likable character out of any of them. <laughs> I see <I> baby. <laughs> Let's finish high school. <laughs> no. Listen, I see. Look, there's baby. Later, the I suicide bombers. I think I'd go crazy too if I woke up to this. This isn't blood. What is it then? Beet juice would be my guess. Of course, any good forensic investigator Two tests found blood out by tasting Huntington it. Huntington Park this afternoon. They had been in the care of their father, who was involved in a bomb incident earlier The two today. infants were unharmed and have been returned to the care of their mother. Meanwhile, on the outskirts of town... How can we enjoy ourselves at parties if you're going to get jealous? Oh, God, it's Ellen, these two. if you insist on flirting, I'm going to get jealous. You asked if I thought there was a solution to <clears throat> conflict in the Middle East. And what did you say? No. There. You see? You were flirting. I was not. the heck is that flirting, you sure? Oh, he was really asking whether the two of you could resist the urge to get into each other's pants. Oh, shut that the hell is up. ridiculous. If you'd said, yes, it is possible for the two of us to rise above our base instincts and get along. Stop making fun of me. I don't like that. It would have been a clear turnoff. He would have left you alone. Yale? Hey, it's Ted. Do not stop for him. He's standing in the middle of the road. This is about to get really loud. Oh, God. I'm going to put Jesus, I forgot how randomly loud some of the sound effects get here. All right. Whom would we like to advise, Helen or Yale? Let's go with Yale. God, chill on the sound effects, Gibson. Damn. All right. Uh, let's just do what our wife says and drive around the vagabond. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Everybody died. <laughs> let's try again. All right, let's stop for Ted. Stop it! God bless you both for stopping. Great. What the hell is your problem? I'm going through a bit of a rock patch right now. Could you help me find my kids? Are you such a loser that you have to pick up a total stranger to feel good about yourself? Are you such a loser that you ignore people in need? I'm not the loser, okay? I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Excuse me. Except maybe an oversexed history professor who's willing to overlook Hello? your obvious ignorance of the Middle hey, East. if you two don't shut up, I'm gonna blow us all to hell. Great. Do you want me to run the roadblock? Yes. Don't be an idiot. I have a bomb. You tip off the police, I blow us all to hell. Delightful. What's your name? Ted. Okay, Ted. I don't know what kind of trouble you're in, but I can help. I'm a lawyer. You have two choices. Resist and get shot, or surrender and let me help you get justice. Take me to my kids and nobody gets hurt. It's too late. If you want to see your kids, you've got to do what I say. Would you mind stepping out of the vehicle? Is the officer feeling up the car? Oh. Hello, Yale. Hi, Angie. Put a rope on your dog, would you? Angie? She's a psychiatrist and police negotiator. Then she must be Dr. Somebody or other. You call her Angie? I want everybody out of the vehicle. If anybody moves, I blow us all to hell. That's a good thing to say in front of a cop. <laughs> okay, what should Yale do? Um... Well, obviously, it's not jump out of the car and run like hell, because then Ted will detonate the bomb. Um, Stay in the car and introduce Angie to Helen. Sounds like the right thing to do. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but what about my friend in the back seat with the bomb? I don't know. What about him? 
And the suicide bomber is not as dangerous or unpredict unpredictable as a jealous wife. Oh, women, am I right? I mean, those crazy broads. <laughs> um, all right, you're right. Forget about Helen. Get Ted under control. Angie, he's my client. Tell him we've found his kids and they're safe. Ted, your lips are safe. My lips? <laughs> I mean... You son of a bitch. Ow! Holy <laughs> smokes, I thought I had problems. Are you okay, bud? You're a Hellcat. Okay. Um... Let's take it like a man and talk Ted into surrender. Actually, we have a hint. I'm just going to use that because I don't want to start over at this point. Oh, okay. Ask Helen why she hit him. All right. Why did you hit me? Because you're a cheating scumbag. Shut up, Hellcat, or I'll blow us all to hell. All right. So what should Yale do now? Say no. He's just so oh, I'm just temporarily bewitched by my mistress, honey. It's not my fault. God, I hate everyone in this game so much. No, I I've just been temporarily bewitched by her. Not to worry. You're a stupid jerk, Yale. And you're embarrassing me. Nah, Helen, you're embarrassing me. Yeah, well, you're embarrassing me. It may not have occurred to you, but we're in a dangerous situation here. Hello? Who warned whom not to stop in the first place? Hey! Ted, I mean, she has a call my wife another name and you're finished. Thanks, Yale. You're beginning to sound a little bit like the man I married. I am the man you married. Now, if you'd just back off for a moment, I'd like to try to defuse... Be my guest. Ted, I want you to surrender now so we can start the process of reuniting you with your kids. Do you think you can do that? Can you get me back my kids? If anybody can, I can. God bless you. I need a cigarette. All right, he's coming out. Don't, Don't shoot! Ted Hadrup, you're under arrest for dangerous use of explosives, attempted murder, child abandonment. You don't have to worry about your daddy. They're going to put him away where he won't be able to hurt you or himself. Now come on. If you're both going to get big and strong, you have to eat your bee. This episode of Ambition is brought to you by the Stittfeld Handy Group Online Negotiation Training. Oh, there it is. There we go. Got to sell that product. Okay. And yeah, some of these, of course, you can play again from the other character's point of view. In this case, uh, Helen. But we'll go on to the uh, third episode. Episode three. The Psychological Assessment. So, I don't know if we have any Silence of the Lambs uh, fans in here, but we get to play Clarice, uh, Bargain Bin Clarice Starling, talking to Bargain Bin Hannibal Lecter, and do a psychological assessment in this next episode, uh, assessing Ted. We're supposed to determine whether he's sane or insane. <laughs> um, this next one is pretty hard, too, and I don't think you can get hints. So I may end up having to go to a walkthrough and cut a lot of this out. What time are we at? 18 minutes. Okay, we're fine. You have been assigned to the task of providing the psychological assessment of Ted Hadrup. In essence, you have to determine whether or not Ted is an appreciation of what is real and what isn't real. You want Ted to talk so you can determine whether he has a grasp on reality and whether he appears normal. In the process of doing your assessment, you are being judged. Your boss is observing you via closed circuit TV. You must choose what you say carefully to find the information you need but not suggest to Ted what he should say. If you provoke Ted into violence and he hits you, you will be blamed, that's bullcrap, not him. If you ask questions that would make a normal person paranoid and he becomes paranoid, once again, you will be blamed, that's bullcrap. If you lose control of the assessment and allow yourself to be drawn into an argument, you will be blamed. Also, bullcrap. Be careful, both sane and insane people can be highly manipulative. 
Ted knows the rules, and so do I, and he may try to make you look foolish. You need to prove yourself today, so choose carefully what you say. Good luck. All right, like I said, this one's actually kind of difficult from what I remember, so hopefully we can get through this. <clears throat> Maybe you think I'm crazy, huh? Well, what would you do if you woke up to find blood everywhere and your children missing? If you had a crazy, malevolent ex-wife, would you suspect her? Would you worry about the safety of your kids? Okay, I believe the first uh, correct question is to ask what he did. Is that part of the test? Um, ask him what, Test? The psychological assessment test, you moron. Isn't that why you're here? Um... Oh, God, I'm getting stuck already. I don't think it's the third one. That just seems too aggressive. Uh, ask why he wants to know? Because it's not normal to be in conversation with somebody who has the power to declare you insane based on what you say. I think I have a right to know when the test starts. Okay, I think we're going the right way so far. I mean, there is a, a point of no return, so to speak, at which it won't matter which of these you choose. You will have already gotten to a spot where you can't get to the, the correct ending, so to speak. All right, so what do we say or do? Ask you an answer. Suggest that it's not you. Uh, I think it's ask why he thinks he's here. Because the Lord intervened and saved my life with a mattress truck. If he didn't want me here, he could have intervened again. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, makes absolute sense. Also, spoiler alert, the end result that we're trying to get here is... The correct uh, psychological assessment is to, I'm not making this up, to determine that Ted is sane and aware of reality. Uh, oh, God. I, I hate everything so much. All right, so what do we do next? Um, oh, God. Ask him why he thinks the Lord wants him here. I am accountable for my actions. All I know is that if I remain pure in heart, the Lord will make it known to me what I should do when the time comes. How do you decide what to do? Uh, okay, at this point, I remember we the correct thing to do is just say nothing and make a note. Hello? What's your intention here? Hello? The silence is ringing in my ears. Answer me. What is your intention? Hello? <laughs> um, I don't think it's the middle one. Say nothing and simply observe him. I'm trying to just basically go off of rote memorization because I, I watched uh, the Retsu Prey of this yesterday to kind of <laughs> prepare for the test, so to speak. Uh, okay, you know what? We're going to go with the old SAT guessing strategy and just guess the longer answer. Ask what happens if he needs an answer and the Lord is silent. I am Hello. I am a simple man up against forces of evil beyond my comprehension. When the Lord is silent, <clears throat> I can only pray think, he will not have I think we might have made it, actually. We might have actually gotten through. I don't know what possessed me to strap dynamite to my chest. It was, it was the horror of what I woke up to that morning, and the absolute silence of God. I knew I was lost, and the window was my only escape. That is when the Lord delivered me from death for another day. Hello. All right, all right, let's go. <laughs> okay, oh my god, I cannot believe I remembered all the correct answers the first time on that. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no hint button on this episode. 
probably like the hardest one so far. And there's no subtitles as to what everyone is saying. So uh, you're dropping the ball on this one. This is the point where Gibson dropped the ball, right? So, yeah, the correct answer here is he is saying in aware of reality, of course. Yay, congratulations. You've conducted a sensitive and intelligent assessment. Uh, if any psych majors, you know, want to chime in in the comment section, give your professional uh, opinion of this, feel free. Ted is not psychotic and is aware of reality. The horror of what he woke up to that morning put him in a temporary dissociative state for which he should not be held criminally responsible. Okay, so Gibson is a psychiatrist and an attorney now. All right. So that was episode three. We'll go on to episode four of Ambition. Where is this? Oh, The Tryst. Okay. We got some juicy relationship drama we're going to play through now. Get ready, get ready for some Dave's, Days of Our Lives stuff here. Like sand through the hourglass, so too are the days of our ambition. Dr. Raleigh, would you kindly tell the court the result of your psychological assessment? I found him to be suffering from delusions. Who? Who is suffering from delusions? That man. I am not suffering from delusions, you parochial quack! Ted, be quiet. I'm just a wretched pawn in your game, mister, and I'm not playing! He believes that his so-called god intervened with a mattress truck. Do not and use those bourgeois, ignorant, contemptuous tones about a blessed miracle. Order the prisoner will we're free. She twisted what I've said, the sanctimonious Sally. Ted, please. You're fired. Bailiff, remove the prisoner. This is a sham. I am the victim here. Your Honor, I can't take your dopey voice seriously. <laughs> Objection. With each turn of fate, the circumstances like tumblers in a lock are falling into place. You will release my most horrifying potential. Too edgy for me, Gibson. <laughs> okay, punk, let's take a walk. Hmm. If you make me come in and drag you out, I'm gonna be a very unhappy camper. Do you know what happens to prisoners of an unhappy temper? Oh, there goes the victim. <laughs> Remember, he should not be held criminally liable. A brutal murder is about to take place. Yale and Angie are drawn by forces beyond their control to a late night meeting which will have grave consequences for both of them. The outcome is predetermined, and there is nothing you can do about it. Then why the hell is... What's the point of a choose-your-adventure game if the outcome is predetermined, there's nothing you can do about it? And on top of all of that, the game is using Comic Sans. It's literally using Comic Sans for the font. I, I don't know if, if we're being purposely trolled at this point or not. I legit don't know. Actually, I have to... Refill my beverage, so uh, I'll be right back in a nanosecond. Okie dokie, I'm back. See, what I tell you, nanosecond. Your challenge will be to help either Yale or Angie conduct themselves in such a way that at the end of the day, they can say in good conscience that they acted with courage and conviction to do the right thing. All right, who are we going to advise, Yale or Angie? I'm more familiar with advising uh, Yale, so just so I can make the right decisions and get us through this, I'm going to advise him. Yale's computer is made of cheese. I'm in a difficult spot here. I really like Angie. She's a major babe. Beautiful, smart, sexy. And when I'm with her, I feel like a tiger. You know what I mean? Anyway... The problem is, well, I think two things. One, I think she's trying to get serious. And two, I'm already married to my boss's daughter. You've met Helen. She's a major pain in the ass. 
but I don't want to rock the boat until I make partner. But I don't want to blow Angie off either. So it's tricky. And if you can suggest a winning strategy, I'm all ears. I got a winning strategy. You should sue the hell out of whoever sold you that tie. All right. We're going to tell him that he's playing with fire. You should break it off with Angie. I mean, he, he should. I know I'm playing with fire, but I love Angie. I don't want to break it off. I don't care, you prick. You're cheating. God, I hate everyone in this game. Okay. <clears throat> um... Oh, God, here I go forgetting the answers again, and there's no hint button. Okay, ask if he thinks Angie would dump him if he lost his current job. Yes, I think she'd dump me if I made her wait, or if I lost my job. She's a passionate woman who wants a man right now who's a winner. Do winners wear scraggly-ass ties like that? Uh... Tell him you think it would be egotistical for him to tell her anything but that her relationship with him is doomed. Listen to me, friend. I've got a rare combination of good cards. Brains, brawn, and opportunity. That makes me very attractive, not only to women, but also to people with power. When you stand in my shoes, the normal rules don't Did apply. You go ahead and live your normal, medium, bourgeois life. I've got one life, and I've got ambition. My sights are set on something more exciting. See ya. God, I'm going to deck you in your smug face. So in one line, he tells us the normal rules don't apply to him, but then he starts berating us for living a bourgeois life. Like, oh, my God. Okay. So we were not wrong to pursue that tactic. In so doing, you have learned some very important information about Yale and his perception of his reality. Yeah. Now you can go back with this knowledge and try again. Okay. Uh, we're going to skip these because we've already seen them. Uh, I believe the first correct answer is this one right here. I know I'm playing with fire, but I love Angie. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to break it off. Um, let's ask if he thinks it's fair to Angie to string her along. Is it fair to deny her the pleasure we share together just because I'm in a difficult spot? Yes. Hmm. Uh... Ask if he thinks she would dump him if he told her she had to wait? Yes. I think she'd dump me if I made her wait or if I lost my job. She's a passionate woman who wants a man right now who's a winner. I know it's not this answer, because I remember kind of doing a, a little dry run of this yesterday. And uh, this one will get you a game over, the top one. So, oh, but so, so this one? Okay, let's ask how he would feel if she told him she was pregnant. Which, spoiler alert, she is with his child. Oh, no. I don't even want to go there. That would be too much. Oh, I got bad news for you, fella. <laughs> um... All right, we're going to go with uh, the SAT strategy again. Pick the longest. Angie is way too smart and way too careful to pull a stunt like that. You're obviously the type to take the most boring path just because it has fewer risks. If I were to decide not to do something just because I could fail, I wouldn't get anywhere. Ah, I certainly it. wouldn't be where I am right now. I've got ambition. See ya. Roll credits. Yeah, as soon as he stands up, you know you've gotten a game over like that. Okay. Oh, shoot. Skip. Uh, playing with fire. I know I'm playing with Skip. fire, but I love Angie. I don't want to break it off. Um, suggest that he should then tell Helen that he wants a divorce and move out to his own apartment. I can't do that. Helen would freak. She's vindictive. She'd go straight to Daddy, and I'd be out on the street in no time. 
Yes, I think she'd dump me if I made her wait, or if I lost my job. She's a passionate woman who wants a man right now who's a winner. Forgot to fill in the color on the computer up in that little corner there. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe it is this option up here. Suggest he should have more confidence in his own ability. If he's good, the old man won't fire him, and if he does, he could get another job. You are very naive, my friend. More than half of my graduating class at law school are stuck in jobs paying half of what I make now, and most of them will never make partner in a firm as good as this. There's lots Damn of it. talent yeah. out there, but what I've got I now is a kick-ass opportunity, okay. and I'm not about to blow it. I've got ambition. Okay, See ya. Shut up. Okay. Um, how long have we been recording? 37 minutes, so we got some time yet. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. If I can't make progress here, I'm going to have to look up a walkthrough and come back, edit this out. Skip. Okay, is it the first? Maybe it's the first one I'm going wrong on. Let's try asking him why he can't just carry on the way he's going. Because she's putting the screws to me. That's the right answer. The last okay, time I have met, been she wanted me here. to take off my wedding ring and throw it out the window. When I refused, she got cross and walked out. Oh, that's not a red flag in a relationship at all. I want you to just defenestrate your wedding ring. And yes, defenestrate is a, a verb that actually means to throw something out a window. Okay. Um, ask what's more important, true love or career? Both are important. Let's face it. Part of the reason that Angie's attracted to me is that I'm a successful lawyer with real career prospects. Okay. <clears throat> Ask if he shouldn't be looking out for number one right now, even if that means giving Angie the boot. I don't know why looking out for number one means giving her the boot. I know there are plenty of fish in the sea, but she's a beaut. Crikey, mate, she's a beaut. All right. Um... Ask if being with Angie now will help or hinder his prospects. That is a good question. I don't know. If Helen caught me with Angie, that would certainly not help my prospects. Okay, so we're back. We're on the correct path now, I remember, at least. All right. Um, ask him about his plans for the future. I want to make partner. The old man's got a fierce practice, and one day it'll be mine if I play my cards right. Um, I think next we ask if he expects Angie to wait for him until he makes partner. The old man's sick with prostate cancer. The doctors say he's got six months to a year at best. Once he's gone, I'm in charge. He's been really good to me, so the last thing I want to do is upset him in his dying hour. So, yes, I do expect her to wait. So, uh, in coming first full circle with crappy writing, just like Tommy Wiseau's The Room, we've got the mention of cancer that I believe never gets mentioned again. It's just a brief passing, like, I've definitely got breast cancer. <laughs> and that's all we'll hear of that. Okay, so what do we advise Yale next? Hmm... I think we'd tell him he should forget about Angie, stick by the old man, go to marriage counseling with Helen. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Marriage counseling with Helen is like going to cooking school with cannibals. Okay. Need to work on your similes there, bud. Uh, let's see. I think next we ask if he intends to take the old man's estate whether he owes it to him to at least make an effort to save the marriage of his only daughter. You're right. I do owe the old man, and he'd be devastated if he knew I was dumping his daughter. Helen's a piece of work, but I did love her once. Maybe I'm partly responsible for making her into the monster that she's become. You're right. I'll call her right now and tell her I want our marriage to work and suggest we go to counseling. Hello?
Darling, it's me. Hello, me. I've been thinking a lot about us, and I think we should go to marriage counseling. Hello? <laughs> Helen? What? Did you hear what I said? Say it again. I want to save our marriage, Helen. I think we need to see someone. Oh, Yale, that's the most romantic thing you've said in years. I love you. Don't move. I'm coming right down. No, wait. Hello? Helen? Working late? Dun, dun, dun. Somebody is about to become a murderer. Somebody is about to die. Find out who, why, and how in part two of The Tryst, A Woman's Scorned. Well, obviously, we have to play Tryst part two. Let's see where this saucy little drama ends up. Hi, yeah, I've got this speech to write. Should I come back in half an hour? No, no, I think we should talk now. You think we should talk? Yeah, what's so funny about that? <laughs> you Be seem nervous. Best part coming Are you up. Nervous? <laughs> no! <laughs> wow, good catch. <laughs> I think you're very nervous. <laughs> and I want to know why. Helen's on her way down here. This um, is not a good time. You can go to my office. She wouldn't Whoa. think to look for you there. <laughs> no. I don't want to see you anymore, Angie. I'm breaking it off. What? Oh. Angie, you What look... are you talking about? Angie, you look it's cross. Over. <laughs> Helen's on her way down and we're going out dancing. You're going out dancing? Give me a break. It's over, Angie. I don't love you. That's not true. Please leave. No. You can't do that to me. I'm doing you a favor. Go. You're not doing me any favor, you son of a bitch. Angie, please. Yale, I'm pregnant. Oh. <laughs> we really are approaching the room levels of writing here. It's great. Oh, hi, Ted. There's no doubt I'm the father. What are you going to do? I'm keeping our baby. What do you want to do? Yeet us the fetus. Okay. So, what should Yale say? Um, God, once again, we got no, we got no hint feature. And as far as I can tell, there, I can't find a walkthrough for any of these. So, if you're playing one of these that doesn't have the hint feature, you need to just like look up somebody else's playthrough of it and see what choices they make. All right. Um, I think, uh, okay, let's just go SAT. Guess the longest. Promise Angie if she agrees to leave the city for a year or two, he will come to look for her after the dust settles with his divorce. Thank you for your advice. I'm afraid I've got to sort this out for myself, and that means discussing it with my wife. Well, then why did right you now, ask me? I've just got to get out of here before Helen catches Angie and me in the same room. Or you could just not I've cheat. I've already told you, I'm staying with my wife. All right. Mm, okay, now, so what should Angie do? Um, accept Yale's decision, but inform him that he will have to make arrangements to pay support for his child. Do you intend to make any plans to support our child? What? You heard me. <laughs> well, time to oh, get out of there. you are. Hi. I was looking all over for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just tying up some loose ends. You were oh. with her again. Who? Don't be an idiot. She screwed up my case this morning, if you want to know the truth. I was reaming her out. <laughs> reaming her out? That's a good word Forget. choice. Do you want to go dancing? <laughs> what does reaming her out mean exactly? I've got a better idea. How about I pick up some Chinese food and we have a nice romantic evening at home by the fire? Oh, Yale! I'll leave it. Five hit combo! I'm gonna kill him.
I'm going to beat that cheating son of a bitch over the head with a blunt object and pound his conniving brain into porridge. God, this gets so loud. I don't even know if this is a chill play anymore. This just gets so randomly loud. So Helen has just burst into your office and grabbed a $12,000 violin that belonged to you, beloved aunt. She is currently, or she is clearly distraught. You've never met her before, no do, nor do you know Yale and Angie. You've been working late and now you're tired and hungry and just want to get home. Try to save your violin and get home safely. Good luck. Don't give me that frightened deer look. Say something useful. Oh, God. Center the text in your speech bubbles. It was driving me fucking crazy. Oh, thank God. We got hints. Okay. Um, so since I'm getting so fed up with this, I'm just going to use the hint to get through this. All right, Angie, why are you so upset? I can't trust that son of a bitch. I can't trust anyone. <laughs> That, that is Helen's uh, fuss ro -da. That, that is her battle cry <laughs> as she wields her melee weapon. <laughs> oh, this game is a train wreck. Okay. So, tell her you understand completely how important it is to have faith in your fellow human beings. Yeah, but look at me. I don't know who to trust anymore. I got a solution here. Uh, hey, Broad, I'm going to call the cops. And if you hit me with that violin, not only are you going to owe me for a $12,000 violin, but uh, you're going to the pokey for assault and battery. How's that for an option? No, what are we supposed to do? Tell her trust is something you have to build. By threatening to bash somebody with a $12,000 violin. How do you do that with a lying, cheating, duplicitous scumbag? All right. We tell her people become liars and cheaters if they think they can get away with it. Are you suggesting I bust this violin over my stupid husband's head? So the correct answer is yes. No, actually the correct answer is no. But I wouldn't put it past this game to make yes the so correct So what are answer. you suggesting? I'm suggesting you put the violin down now before I call 911 get you arrested for assault. Nope, we suggest that she ask herself why her marriage is so important. My marriage is important because it's a union that's supposed to lead to something bigger than myself. I just realized randomly for the first time she has a gold tooth for whatever reason. Okay. Suggest that she could benefit from some psychotherapy. Yeah, yeah, you probably could, but I don't think that's the answer. No, ask why her husband doesn't appear to share that view. Okay. I thought he did. Maybe he still does. But he's been, uh, how did he call it? Bewitched by an evil woman. It's not enough to punish liars and cheaters. There's something missing in your theory. What is it? Horizontally centering the text in the speech bubbles. That's what's missing here. <laughs> Suggests that she needs to make her husband understand that his greater purpose is served by making their marriage work. This marriage is not going to work. <laughs> it's got, Dr. Phil could not make this marriage work. Yes. She's blinded him to the beauty and potential of our life together. It's finally clear to me now. I know what I have to do. Thank you. Yale, what was it that you suggested we do earlier? Do you want to go dancing? No. How about I pick up some Chinese food and we have a nice romantic evening at home by the fire? That sounds lovely. I'll see you at home. Drum roll, please. I can do what I like, I can dress how I like, and I can say what I like. Being free means I don't have to say I'm sorry. Unless, of course, I've done something wrong. 
Nah, you've done nothing wrong, Ted. You're a perfect angel. Freedom is not just a right. Freedom is also a responsibility. Oh, thank you, Kierkegaard. Dun, dun, dun. So, Angie, the forensic psychiatrist, has been murdered. Who is the killer? Ted, Helen, Yale, or somebody else? Is it a simple crime of passion or something more sinister? There are dark forces at work, and things are not always what they appear to be. It will be your job to find the truth in the next episode of Ambition, The Suspects. All right. So, how long have we been recording? Uh, 51 minutes, okay. Uh, I did not play through the next episode. I didn't do it. This is as far as I got in my dry run. So we can go to the next one. Um, just hopefully they have hints. Otherwise, I'm going to be flying mostly blind. I'm just going to be going off of what little memory I have of the Retsu Prey. All right. Episode 6, The Suspects. Okay, you are the detective in charge of catching the murderer of Dr. Angelina Raleigh. Your superior, Superintendent Frank Crabtree, doesn't like you because of some offhand comment you made that you can't even remember saying or what it was. And I know it says time remaining 16 hours, 0 minutes up here. That's not 16 hours in real time, don't worry. It's just for after every like decision you make, it, it just subtracts a set amount of the time there. He is looking for any credible reason to have you pulled off the case and replaced with his ambitious nephew, Duke Crabtree. <laughs> this is one of the best characters right here, Duke Crabtree. We'll, we'll get to see more about him. You know that the police budget is very tight and that you must solve the case with as little forensic lab assistance as possible. Adding to the urgency of your investigation is the fact that the newspapers have raised the alarm about Ted's escape from custody and made the implication that Ted may be the culprit and that he is insane and will probably kill again. The public is scared. You will need to manage your time effectively in this investigation. Pay attention to the clock. Let's go. I'm giving you 16 hours to make an arrest. If you don't have a suspect in custody by midnight tonight, Duke's going to take over, and you'll be managing the desk at Central Booking. You follow? Ah, damn it, we have no hint function. Why do some of these have hint function and some others don't? Oh, my God. Um, I think... <laughs> I would think the correct answer would be accept the deadline and get to work. If I remember right, I think actually you can tell Crabtree that you sense there's some animosity between you and ask what you did to upset him. Listen to me, you pusillanimous cupcake. <laughs> Are you insinuating that any alleged animosity between us is going to have a negative effect on your job performance? Um, let's ask him what we said to upset him. Nothing. Now I've got work to do, and your time's running out. Okay. I mean, we can make an arrest right now and then just slack off for 15 hours and 43 minutes, but obviously that's not the right thing to do. Oh, goodness. Um... Let's visit, I think visiting the murder scene a good decision. We haven't touched anything. It's just the way we found her. Alright. Use your mouse to explore the scene. Click on objects in order to collect them as evidence. Wow, it's, it's almost like it's actual gameplay. <laughs> 
Uh, what's this on her wrist? Broken watch, glass cover shattered. Time on face, 12.06 a.m. Anything else? How about the blood? Multiple blunt trauma wounds to the skull. Some brain matter exposed. Fractured skull. Okay. We can't um, collect the watch. Oh, God, I just saw every time I click on it, it takes away time. Oops. God, that's stupid. Uh, um, okay. Salty tear stains on face. Anything else we can click on? I'm just kind of sweeping the mouse here. Actually, wait, does the tab trick work with flash emulators? Aha, it does. Okay. <laughs> Good old tab trick. It wouldn't be a flash game if we couldn't use the tab trick, even in an emulator. All right, we clicked on that. Oh, what's this here? Bruising to the wrist and friction burns on hand palm, indicating an attempt to defend herself. Okay. Uh, we saw the salty tear stains. We examined the head wound. Um... All right, I think that's everything there. So let's zoom out. Uh, I hope I get to shut the dog up. Are you going to leave with evidence still on the ground? What did... Okay, click on objects. I did click on them, though. Okay, every time I click on the watch, it just subtracts 10 minutes, and I'm not collecting it as evidence. Oh god, I hope the emulator isn't glitching out. Hmm. Um... Okay, I think the emulator is glitching out because I clicked on the head wound and the description for the watch came up. Oh, that stinks. So we might not even be able to progress here. So, I mean, I may have to cut it here. How long have we been recording? Uh, almost an hour. Although there will be some stuff I have to cut out and post. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can't restart, maybe. Are you going to leave with evidence still on the ground? Shut up. Oh, yes, there is. I found the murder weapon, a tire track, and a piece of jewelry. I'd ask the lads to run a make on the tire iron to see if we can identify the vehicle. Thank you. I appreciate your confidence in me. All right. Um, I didn't know if those were the correct things to click or not. I'm just trying to... I don't know if I want to restart this now or not. I mean, I've accidentally wasted a lot of time. Uh, let's interview Angie's colleague, Dr. Russell. I can't believe anyone would kill her. Do you think it was that guy that escaped yesterday? That's what the papers seem to be suggesting. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's see. Which of these? Uh... Ask if he is aware if Angie had any enemies. Enemies? I don't know. She was a very ambitious, secretive bitch, if you want my opinion. But would somebody want to kill her for that? I mean, it sounds like you're a, 
awfully vindictive toward her, like uh, you're kind of an enemy yourself of her. Sus. Okay. Um... Ask for a list of the cases that she's been working on. Listen to me, sweetie. If you want to see her cases, check her computer. But you're wasting your time and endangering lives. Your suspect is that Hartrick girl, and he's mad as a hatter and likely to kill again. Um. How about you do your job and uh, you don't tell me how to do mine? Ask him about the nature of his working relationship with Angie. We took different cases. She preferred the high profile. She was never interested in my opinion. And frankly, I was rarely interested in hers. God, if your text is going to go outside of the speech bubble, shrink it. All right, well, thanks for your time, bud. Uh, let's visit Angie's home. All right, hey, again, we, uh, all right, use your mouse to explore the scene, click on object, oh, great. Is it going to glitch out like the crime scene did? Can we click on anything? I'm going to use the tab trick. Computer docking station. Missing computer. Gotcha. Man's sweater with Yale's name sewn on the inside. Video receipt in pocket for fatal attraction. Ha ha ha. Medical journal article on the drug Paxwick. Sections highlighted. Date book with dates marked H away. And an entry for next week presentation to Reg Reg. Photo of Yale holding Angie in his arms sailing on a yacht. <laughs> All right, I think that's everything there. Hello. Oh, hello, I'm Mrs. Tart, the next-door neighbor. I suppose you're looking for clues. Who is it? It's the police! Police? The poor woman's not even cold, and they're here about the lease? It's the police, you idiot! Oh, my mistake. It's a terrible shame about that poor girl. Oh, spare us your blathering about the obvious, and go back to your TV. They want to talk to me. What can I tell you? <laughs> um, let's see. Introduce yourself and show her the bracelet and ask if she's ever seen it before. Oh, that's a lovely piece, isn't it? She never wore stuff like that. What would you know, you silly old goat? She doesn't wear flashy stuff like that. Don't listen to him. He's blind as a bat. He still hasn't noticed my hair. I noticed, to be sure. Just saw no sense in bringing it up. I haven't changed my hairstyle in 30 years. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, just saw no sense in bringing it up. Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> okay. Ask when was the last time the herd or saw Angie? I saw her leave for work yesterday, but she didn't come back. That's right. We can hear the door close, and she didn't come back. Of course, with these cheap walls, that's not all we can hear. Nobody oh, is oh. interested in your perverted source of entertainment. Wow, oh, wow. Oh. I'm getting saucy. Uh, ask if they knew if Angie had any relatives. No, the poor dear. She was an only child, and she lost her folks in a car accident two years ago. Yup, both of them in one shot. It was hard on her. Ask if she's noticed anything suspicious from Angie's apartment. Oh my, yes. A black male comes by at all hours, day or night. A black male? He's a lawyer and a perfectly decent chap. His name is Yale. He gave me a boost when my battery died. 
Don't listen to him. His battery hasn't been able to keep a charge in years. What you don't know about my battery could fill the library. <laughs> Hmm. That's why she thought Yale was suspicious. He had a wedding ring on, that's why. He was conducting adultery. Jeez, he was a handsome buck and she was a looker. Hurt? Zip it. <laughs> Alright, uh, okay, thank you for your time. I only got five and a half hours. Hmm. So we just lost over half an hour there from what, doing nothing? Okay. I don't remember uh, in the Retsu Prey I watched having to read the newspaper headlines. Let's see if we can make an arrest. So, have you found a suspect? Um... So, spoiler alert, I believe we are supposed to arrest Bridget, Ted's ex-wife. I don't see Bridget's name here. So we'll say we know who killed her, but the name is not here. Duke has made a case based on circumstantial evidence linking Ted to the crime. Given the town's need for a quick resolution of the case and limited funds in the police budget, Crabtree is satisfied with charging Ted and pulls you off the case. If you think somebody else did it, you will first have to prove that Ted didn't do it. You could have done better if you had negotiated more time from Superintendent Crabtree. Oh, damn it. Okay, wait, so now we get a hint? Crabtree needs a quick arrest. The media has already decided Ted is guilty and Crabtree is only too happy to serve Ted. Okay, well, I might just leave you all in suspense there, and uh, we'll call it a video. We've been going a little over an hour. So, yeah, that that is <laughs> the absolute brilliance. That is the Ambition series of Flash games. And the, the kicker is, um, I, I don't know if it was Ambition or if it was something else that Michael Gibson made, but... Something he made was either nominated for or maybe even won a Webby. I'm not even making that up. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yes, enjoy this little blast from the past, back from when Flash was still a thing and all the glorious stuff that came along with it. So, everyone, uh, stay comfy, stay safe, stay ambitious, <laughs> and have a good evening. This is Norman signing out.